Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Uh, ooh, ma'am. I get ma'am. Okay. Um, so first off, is there anything you don't want me to ask you or bring up? No, you can ask me whatever you like. Oh, okay. Um, so you're in Oklahoma right now? Uh, yes, I'm in Oklahoma at the moment. We were last night in uh, Louisiana. And before that, we were in Texas. <laughs> um, so. so I was looking at your Great. tour schedule, and you pretty much have a show almost every night. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> so, are, so are you tired? When do you sleep? Uh, we, I usually sleep. Uh, usually fall asleep right when the sun starts coming up, and then I'll sleep uh, till around noon. If I'm allowed to sleep a little later, I'll do that. Because being that my highest amount of energy has to happen on stage at night. So, you know, my circadian rhythm's a little messed up anyway. So it's pretty uh, probably pretty exhausting. Yeah, it could be, it'd be rough unless you have to do morning radio, and that can be devastatingly difficult. So uh, that, that stuff gets, gets really hard, or if you have to do uh, TV in the morning. You know, those are, those are rough because you still have your shows at night. Yeah, and you but, still have to give your all, obviously. Yeah, yeah, you just try not to, uh, you know, it's always a, a little bit of a battle, you know, trying to sneak in a nap here and there if you can. Sometimes you have to go a day or so. Uh, so, I saw a funny video, um, we all, as a fan, I'm obviously a huge fan, um, but I saw this funny video, and, and I know that as a fan, we all like that you tweet out um, videos when you're on the road, and you just update us all, all the time on Twitter and things like that. Um, but I saw this really funny video. You were on a tour bus, and um, <laughs> so my question is: Do you prefer cocoa butter or green jello? <laughs> cocoa butter. <laughs> Did you what? That was hilarious. I don't even remember. How you don't old, remember that? How old is that video? What's that? I said, how old is that video? It's pretty old. It was really funny, though. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> performing is something that I think a lot of a lot of your fans that is what they love because they get to be near you and they get they get the live version of you. What what is your favorite part of performing? Um, yeah, the best for me the best element is is the uh, that immediate reaction you can get from a live audience that really can't be substituted with anything. So I think it's just human nature to want an immediate result at anything you're doing. And when you're performing live, uh, you know, you're getting an immediate reaction from the people that, from you know, from who you're performing to. So there's that, there's that instant gratification element to it on top of the feeling music gives you. But there's no, there's no substitution for for having that 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 amount of uh, that amount of combined energy in a room, you know, a bunch of people getting them excited or having them clap or, you know, ha taking them with you on your journey throughout the night, you know, and um, that's one of the things I was really excited about with this album, Sweeter, is that I thought that I thought that this was the sexiest record I've ever made, and on top of that, I felt like it would really add. Um, it would add a really nice element uh, to to my live performances, to our concert. On top of, you know, songs with, you know, the, of course, the earlier stuff, like I Don't Want to Be or Carry It or, or In Love With a Girl or We Belong Together. On top of that stuff, bringing this other thing into that really, really helps helps diversify the show um, and, uh, and, and make it that much more interesting, that much more diverse. I agree. This album is very sexy, and I'm I'm loving it. Uh, Thank you for that. I have to say, it's sexy, but it's also you you really kind of put yourself out there on this one. I mean, you always have, but even more. Yeah. Thank Thank you for that. You know, it, um, th this particular album. Um, first of all, it, it was the most important album of my of my career. So this particular one. And why 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 do you say that? Well. Well, because, you know, I had some success with my first record. I had less success with my second record. Um, and and my third record was just an art record that was just, that wasn't intended really to do anything other than, you know, for, you know, for people like me to, uh, to enjoy, you know, people who just want to listen to 
uh, an art, an artsy kind of New York vibe type of album. You know, it's a small mm-hmm. community. Um, but uh, but it was really important for me to, you know, to 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 do my best at at making this one this one work because you know you can only have so many chances at being viable. Um, being viable on the, on the, you know, in the big league, you know? Yeah. Heck and, yeah. uh, and, and at the end of the day, that this is the big league. And, and, uh, you know, every time, every time you make an album, you, you know, of course there's that lotto ticket of, you know, making it, you know, hitting it big and having a huge hit. And at the same time, there's also that, you know, most, it, most, most of the people at the casino are going home broke. You know what I mean? But just all there is to it. Yeah, it's a huge uh, gamble. Scary. That's right. It's a gamble, and it's a gamble with your career. Um, and uh, and so that's a it, it's a weird kind of thing. I mean, imagine imagine whatever job you're at. Every time you every time you had to make a decision, right? And a lot of people, a lot of people have jobs like this. People who are making managing positions, or people who own own businesses, small businesses, etc. Every time they make a decision uh, to. Make and, right? Yeah. For or for growth, they're also taking the risk of of losing of 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 getting demoted or losing the job. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. So at the, at the end of the day, there's a tremendous amount of risk involved, and every time you put an album out there, um, you know you're you're you you run the risk of being that much less viable the song doesn't work if the single doesn't work right right you're um, associated but, with a, a bomb kind of yeah and so and so um and so at the same time you know you're fortunate enough to be able to you know to call your own shots on the road do your you know do your touring thing but you know but we all have have that element in us that makes us want to to have that you know uh, that competitive edge and be out there and and be at radio and be at you know and be on TV and, and doing what we love to do and and um and we all we all enjoy accolades if we get an opportunity to get them so um you know there there are always going to be those be those factors everyone doing a job uh, always wants to get patted on the back you know at the end of the day and, and if you're lucky enough to you know to have a, a single that's, that's successful that's your opportunity you know to get patted on the back and go wow okay great I'm doing a good job right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, and it's a, it, it may be a, it may seem, I don't know if I, it sounds like I'm belittling the job or not because I'm not approaching it like a star. I'm approaching it like, you know, like, like a really cool job at the end of the day. Um, but it's, a, but it's a job and I happen to have a really cool job, but there's lots of risk involved and that's part of, I think that's part of what keeps it exciting and keeps people like me, uh, kind of addicted to it as well. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. There is always there's, a, there's always that potential for a huge game, you know, that lotto ticket, that big, you know, that big ten moment. So, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of awesome in that in that way. So you've been you've been doing you've been performing you've been into music since how old were you? Uh, I mean, since I was. Little, okay, really little. Um, I'm, I, I was a cradle singer, so, you know, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's really, sound like singing to anybody else, but they say I was singing in the cradle, so. I love it. I'm the worst singer ever, personally. I mean, glass will shatter if I sing. It's, it's horrible. So I, I respect anyone with any talent whatsoever. <laughs> but I was just wondering, you're going to be performing at um, Interlock and Arts Academy here in Michigan um, yeah. next, next Saturday, and that's. That's a really important school. Um, you know, really talented students there. And I was just wondering how how music has has gotten you through things, and how important you think it, the arts and music are to uh, young people. Well, per, well, personally, I, I I feel like I feel the importance of art uh, and, and music in perhaps a different way. I mean, culturally speaking. I think that art and music represent a culture far more than math class. So, um, you know, when people talk about, oh, I had such a great time in Paris, or they talk about Rome, or they talk, you name all the places they talk about and all the people that they talk about and the cultures they talk about. 
They're never talking about, they're never talking about the math of the country. That's the art of the country and the things that are artistic, like food and architecture mm -hmm. and music and aesthetics. They speak about aesthetics and sound more than they speak about the math. Of the Although I'm sure there's plenty of math involved in architecture, it starts with somebody sketching the art of the structure first. So uh, art, to me, is culture. So without art, without music, there is no culture. You're identity -less. And to me, music is what gives people identity. In my opinion, there's nothing, there's no stronger social filter than the music people listen to. I mean, when you think about music and the type of music, if you think country music, you immediately start thinking about a certain look, a certain kind of clothes. Mm -hmm. They speak it. The same thing when people talk about R&B or hip-hop. People start thinking about a certain look, a certain type of clothes, etc. So, you know, what is more valuable? I mean, what is more, what is more uh, prominent culture than music? Well said. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to switch gears just for one second. Um, we got to sit and talk about you on Dancing with the Stars every week. And of course, voted for you, yeah. and and we were, we were really sad when you when you left, but oh. we did vote for you. I promise. Uh -oh. Um, I mean, not everyone gets that experience. What did you What did you take from that? Oh man, it was awesome. I have to say, like as much hard work as it was, because it was a ton of work. Oh, I bet. There were, and there were days I was just like, oh my god, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Because we were, you know, I was doing tour dates while that show was going on. There was only one. Yeah, I'm like, how? I'm like, seriously, does this guy sleep? Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty brutal scheduling wise. Um, but the one week that I didn't have to tour was our best week. You know, it was the the rumba week. You know, I thought we nailed it, and uh, and I was like, yeah, yeah, all right, I'll do this. You know, and then I had to go back on the road the next. So it really was, it really was tough to, you know, to keep to keep it up. The show itself, yeah, as Serena Smirnoff put it, she was an, a, a fucking awesome partner. <laughs> um, uh, she was like, look, Kevin, it's a, one, a once in a lifetime opportunity. Just, you know, go at it as hard as you can, have as much fun as you can. You know, I said, all right, yeah, deal. And so we did, you know. But uh, it was really tough because she is so great at it, and it looks so easy when she does, you know. And, uh, and, and, but, but one of the things that was tough was us just learning how she had to figure out how I learned as, as a teacher. She needs to figure out how a student learns. That's right. Me, personally, I'm a lot better at when someone does something in front of me, mimicking it, right? Right. And it's one of those conversations I was, me and Donald Driver were laughing about it because we were, most of us were just getting brutalized. <laughs> uh, and we were like, oh, man, what are we going to do, bro? I mean, he's like, yeah, man, you're like me, man. He thought it was all just going to be, like, fun and games. And then all of a sudden you show up, people start bringing their A game, and you get to go to practice. And I said, exactly. <laughs> so, and so, you know, Kalina would do things, like, one step at a time. And I, I would have to say, you know what, can you please just show me the whole movement? Because it's a lot easier for me to replicate it. Can you just show me one pass? Then if you, then if you do one little arm movement at a time, you know what I mean? Let's see the whole movement first, what it's supposed to look like. And yeah. Now, you know, so, so things like that. And uh, But I have to say, I have to say that the experience I got on the show, that minimal amount of dance training, those fundamentals mm -hmm. that, were, that were involved, greatly improved my own personal live performances at that concert. Really? Because it, yeah, because it changed my uh, it changed my approach to you know to what is your stature while you're on stage? How do you stand? What's your posture like? How does it read out there? You got a little more swagger. I yeah, cause I don't <laughs> I don't typically look at that stuff, you know. But she made me, Karina made me conscious of it, and watching the other dancers made me conscious of how does it read out there. Mm -hmm. versus, you know, when I was on stage, I'd be more kind of like, my body would be closed up. I'd be singing, as, you know, the best I could and really going for it every night. 
and the vocal performances I still, you know, I'm, I'm really comfortable with. It was just like the way I stand or, you know, where you put, the way you're putting your shoulders, your hands, your arms, things like this, that really helped define how people are reading the performance from out there. And that, seeing that and, and, and seeing the difference between where I was before the program, before that, before that experience on Dancing with, with the Stars, oddly enough, greatly, greatly affected uh, my personal, my live performances for my real career, which is, you know, which is singing songs that I write. Awesome. Yeah, right. it was really, really a, a, an outstanding, um, I saw a, an outstanding difference, uh, and I felt a huge difference as well, simply being in that much better condition. Mm-hmm. Um, it just made everything easier. So you're going to dance a little bit next Saturday? You know, I wouldn't say that I dance. <laughs> I say that I, I would say that I move. Okay. Well, that's good. A, that, a little movement, a little swagger. I like that. Exactly. I'm not going to try to tell somebody on me being a dancer, but the fact <laughs> is I just move a lot better than I did. Nice. You know? I mean, my job, you know, my entire career has mostly been been seated at a piano. You know, that's my job. Mm-hmm. Um, so getting a piano player getting off his bench and stepping out front, in the front and performing the song um, really changes changes the game a lot, you know. I still hit the piano, but it's just more special now going to the piano rather than just at the piano the whole time. So you're kind of getting out of your comfort zone there. Yeah, well, exactly. I'm making a place that wasn't comfortable a lot more comfortable than it was, for sure. And it really is helping. I think it's really improved the show. I think it's made the show a lot sick here. And honestly, I think it made, it made the show a lot more masculine than it was. Masculine? <laughs> So your your fans they all voted for you on the show, um, and there's a lot of fans who come out and see you, and they they stick by you no matter what. What would you what would you have to say to them? Oh man, well obviously you have to thank them because the reality is this: I'm in an opinion business. No matter how good of a job you think you're doing as a musician or some type of artist, it's all based on opinion. It's all based on people's opinion of what you're doing. And so your fan base is a reflection of how well you're doing. And your fan belief in you is your whole career. That's all there is to it. And and without them, I'd be back and on the street, you know, playing on a corner somewhere, or playing in a ballroom somewhere, playing at a restaurant somewhere, you know. Um, wishing somebody would wishing somebody would love what I was doing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um and it's been a it's been a really long a really long road, and uh, and I'm really 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 thankful to be to be where I'm at right now, and and uh, I still have my eyes set even higher than where I am now because because I'm human and I always want to go to the next place. You know, I, you always talk to your fans too. You 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 seem like you I don't know. You act like a regular dude. Yeah, I'm pretty regular. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think you're regular, but you act like a regular dude. Yeah, yeah. No, I am. I'm, I'm that is. Okay, well, we'll say your voice isn't regular. How's that? Certain dude is a gift. <laughs> Certain dude is a gift. But I, I appreciate it. You know, I think, uh, I think just because of the way my career uh, evolved, uh, you know, the fact that I really did, I, I began as a regular dude, and I worked, I worked at it like, a, I worked at it as if it was a normal job. You know, because um, my father told me, he said, don't think because you're a musician, you're going to be able to be some lazy fucking musician like everybody else. <laughs> and you have to work at it like a real job, like like everyone else who's successful. So your dad kind of kicked you in the butt a little bit? Oh, yeah. That's good. Um, I'm kind of hiding what a huge fan I am. I'm trying to be professional. <laughs> oh. Um. I was just going to ask you. This, it, it was kind of. This is kind of a weird question, but you take take with it what you will. I don't know. It was my birthday yesterday, and I. You can say no. It's fine. Uh, I was asking birthday. if you could sing "Happy Birthday." <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh man, that's one I don't really sing. Um, let me see. It won't sound good me singing it because that's the song that doesn't really bring out the vocal passion. Okay. Um, When's the last time you heard the birthday song? It's really pretty. 
Mm, never, but I think you can make it sound good. Ah. Uh-huh. Ah. Uh-huh. That's one of the songs I really don't do very much. Or how about you just um, sing anything? I wrote a bird. I wrote a birthday song. You did? Oh yeah. Yeah. It went like this. See, it went. It's that time of year again. I'm here with my family and all my friends. We got some candles and cake. You know the good kind that your mom can bake. There's wax dripping on the ice. And it's so inviting. But all I want for my birthday is my birthday. All I want for my birthday, yeah, is my birthday. Oh, look at these new socks. You got a little soul. The nice of the last year's pack I got. And this shirt is a dream. But it's nothing I'll be seeing in my Now you got me looking pretty funny. I prefer a car. Dun, dun, dun. In clothes and money, but all I want for my birthday is my birthday. All I want for my birthday, yeah, is my birthday. Yeah. All I really want, all I really want. It's my birthday, yeah. Erica, all I want for my birthday is my birthday, yeah. Woo! Dum, 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 Happy birthday, Erica. That was the best birthday present ever. <laughs> ever! Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little obnoxious now. Is that okay? Okay. All right, for all the lovely ladies out there, is Gavin DeGraw a single man? <laughs> you know that was coming. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, I guess I am at the moment. Um, yeah. Yes, I am currently single. Okay, uh, and I, I think that's pretty pretty normal for uh, for people who do this for a living. You know, when they hit the road, it's kind of So that's where the, the, the compact tour bus comes in? The compact tour bus. <laughs> <laughs> is that really how bad it is? Is, is it really that small? Uh, this one's a little bit better at where I'm right now. So this one slides out, kind of slides open in a couple of spots. So that's a lot more room. So no, uh, no cocoa butter required. No cocoa butter required. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that that, that particular bus, I think that particular video was, uh, was uh, one of the European buses that we did on. I think it was. Uh, I was seriously, I was laughing out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let me see. I could just sit, I'm just going to sit and keep you on the phone. To be, no, I'm not, not going to do that, but, um. Because I'm going to have to run. I know, I know. Okay, um, so you performed in Detroit. Yeah. Are you coming to that Interlocking show? I have, oh, trust me. I got my tickets a long time ago. Awesome, awesome. We're going to have to come back and make sure you pay. I will. I would love to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have to do that. Um, and if uh, you... It was my it was my keyboard player, my organ player, Jimmy Wallace. It was his birthday. The night last night. Jimmy Wallace! Tell him I said happy birthday. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> You sang this song, you sang Let's Get It On in Detroit, St. Andrews Hall, a long time ago? Oh, yeah. Can, can you give me a little something of that? <laughs> Not right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a great song? It is. I thought I could at least ask. Um, I also have one more, one more request, and I know I'm hogging you, and it's horrible. Um, my friend Andrew, he was like, hey, Erica, why don't, you, why don't you get Gavin's cell phone number? And obviously, that's really creepy and weird, so... I was wondering if you could say, hey, Andrew, Erica asked me for my number, but just like a, like a message for him, making fun of him. Okay. Because it. it's a bet, so. Got it. 
do it right now. Sure. Hey Andrew, it's uh, hey Andrew, it's Gavin DeGraw. Just want to let you know, uh, I got Erica's number, <laughs> and I gave her mine. <laughs> We're like going steady now. Going steady. <laughs> Wow, I'm acting really immature. That's fine. <laughs> so, um, a really last question of all, I promise. Go ahead. Cross my fingers. Promise. Um, very vague question, so answer it however you like. <laughs> Would you ever consider dating an ABC news anchor who lives in Traverse City, Michigan? Yeah, of course. <laughs> who, who wouldn't consider that? <laughs> all right, I, I, got, I have that recorded, so I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's all I think about. That's all you think about is dating an ABC anchor in Traverse City, Michigan? Clearly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> is there anything else? I, I really don't want to hang up with you, but is there anything else that, that, <laughs> that you want to say? <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think we pretty much got it. I think we pretty much I covered everything from your birth. So. We got the tour, we got the record, we got the tour bus. Did we mention uh, the Colby Calais amazing performances? And she's amazing live, beautiful and uh, and amazing. And she's a sweetheart, right? She uh, seems like a sweetheart. She is. She's so sweet. And uh, we're writing a song together, almost finished. Ooh. Uh, yeah. And so it's uh, it's like our little. We have like a little little love song. A little love song. We love that. And then Andy Grammer and your brother, right? Um, this show, I'm not sure if Andy's on this one or if my brother's on this one. I'm, I don't remember. Well, I know Andy's going to be at Interlochen, but... Um, uh, okay, if, Dan, if Andy's on that, then Joey won't be on that. Uh, there will only be one, there'll probably be only one uh, open or the other, but I'm not, I'm not sure. So who holds Andy, down the, the, Andy, the fort in, at, at your bar? What's that? Who holds down the fort at your bar when you guys are both gone? Exactly. I think, uh, I think it's pretty much a, a grab bag of cash out of the register. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> Yay, the boss is here. Free money. Uh, I don't know. Is is there anything else? I so I won't hang up with you. You're gonna have to hang up on me. Uh, yeah. Well, no. Everything's all good. We, I think we, I think we nailed it. But I have to run. Okay. Well, I hope you have a great show, and I can't wait to and see you. And you're an awesome interview, and you're an adorable personnel. So are you. You're you're pretty cool, I have to say. <laughs> pretty you. pretty cool, dude. <laughs> Thank you. All right, bye, Gavin. I'll see you next Saturday. I look forward to that. Me too. More than you. More than you. <laughs> yeah.